And I'd like to introduce the client to Aaron Jordan, and the candidate who will introduce him in a few minutes. I'd also like to thank the Griffith for putting the evening on as a sponsor. The candidates will go first. I just, from this end of the table, let's go down the list. The first half dozen are candidates for the trust, and the other side of the table are candidates for the city. Motion. 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 Mot
In my second term, we adopted the Companion Land Use Bylaw. These are foundation documents for our community, and they serve us to this day largely unchanged. I am pragmatic as a trustee for giving Maxwell Lake a 300-meter protection area and providing for Meadowbrook and Heritage Place. I also approved several market value housing projects, as well as the development permits for a new hotel near Mogis. Along with other elected officials of the day, I brought about the, pre the previous provincially funded restructure study and referendum. Some candidates see a need for a comprehensive restructure of the instruments of office. But my position is that there is no need to remake the Items Trust in the image of candidates campaigning largely on complaints over which the Trust has no authority. Thank you. Thanks, Earl. Well, um, I'm a West Coast gal. I grew up in Langley. My kids grew up in Delta, and I spent the uh, remainder of, of the last 20 years of my career in Toronto, and was very glad to come to Salt Spring. Uh, why would you vote for me? Well, I'll give you five reasons. I'm independent. I am beholden to no one. As a trustee, I will work for the betterment of all salt springers, not just those with a particular view. All the business of the trust will be carried out in the public view. I'll always seek consensus in decision making. That doesn't mean I whiffle waffle. When you seek consensus, first you look for the things that you agree on, and then you tackle the rest. That said, I'm not afraid to make a decision and back it up with reasons to support that. I understand small business and finance. My career has been practical aspects of construction and finance, and I have, um, well, about the last 15 years of my career, I worked as a troubleshooter and a, 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 for a large brokerage firm. I firmly believe in the Islands Trust and its mandate. Land use is the primary function of the Islands Trust. And water, quality, quantity, those are integral to the use of the land. I believe that we should protect both the place and the people. And I believe that we do need a provincial government study if only to put the matter to rest. Let's look at the options. It doesn't commit us to anything to look at the options. We look at the options. If it leads to a vote or a referendum on incorporation, so be it. We can make a democratic decision on how we want to be governed. Thanks. Thank you, Harold. I'm uh, Larry Woods, and uh, normally when I stand up here, I'm tempted to sing. Tonight, uh, I won't do that. I'll just urge you to come up to Bach on the Rock with the orchestra and choir this weekend, if uh, that will, if that is what will uh, decide your vote. I'm a university professor and cheesemaker, and a candidate for a trustee in the Islands Trust election here on Salt Spring Island. Uh, I would like to thank the Driftwood uh, for the opportunity to speak to you about the reasons I'm asking for your vote on election day, Saturday, November the 19th. If you are a supporter of the Islands Trust and believe in its preserve and protect mandate, I ask for your vote. If you are comfortable with the way the Trust has managed land use on Salt Spring since its creation in 1974, I want to continue benefiting from a planning approach that puts our people and this place ahead of narrow profit-seeking initiatives, I ask for your vote. If you appreciate the need to protect our neighborhoods in the face of rezoning applications that might threaten neighborhood character, and want a trustee who will listen to your concerns, I am your candidate. If you are concerned 
about the way our outgoing trustees have been mistreated, about those who try to manufacture contention over Ireland's trust activities, and about those who are trying to manufacture our consent for incorporation, I ask for your vote. If you appreciate the need for the unique form of governance offered by the Islands Trust to a unique group of people in this unique region of British Columbia, I am your candidate. If you believe that our island's farmers should be encouraged and assisted to help us achieve food security on a year-round basis by producing more local Salt Spring brand farm products, I ask for your vote. I am passionate about our island, and I believe it is already a model for the world. If you love Salt Spring as I do, came here precisely because of the different sort of community it is and would like to keep it that way, I am your candidate. Thank you. And the very next candidate, George Brown. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is run through the credentials I bring to the table as a candidate for trustee. And the first of those is 37 years of experience as a, as a, a UK qualified architect. And I've worked with land use bodies, which of course the trust is, all of my career. I've worked with environmental protection agencies, which of course the trust is too, for most of my career. I ran my own ecological design group in the UK. I'm the former chair of the Scottish Ecological Design Association. I've lectured and taught in Britain and Spain to both architects and students in low environmental impact design and construction. And I designed and delivered the first module for teaching to the Royal Corporation of Architects in Scotland in low environmental impact design and construction. So I have a track record in looking after, preserving and protecting our environment that goes back 37 years. I will not sacrifice that on this island. But there are certain things we need to see. And the first is a, a restoration of the balance in terms of assessing what a healthy environment is. And that's not just a healthy natural environment. It includes social aspects, economic, cultural, and physical. We need good governance. And we need that governance to protect the natural environment, but also to be responsive to the needs of the community. We need good administrative and fiscal management. We need trustees who help us feel included through representing us. The maps are the people in place rather than place the poor people. We need an, an end to divisiveness and, and the sorts of accusations and negative campaigning that's starting already. Um, uh, 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 then we need full community participation in the major decisions that are going to shape our future. Thank you. Thank you, George. The next speaker is Mark Wyatt. That was George Graham. He's my running mate. Because he's the best candidate. And I think I'm equally good. My name is Mark Wyatt. I'm raising a family on South Spring. I've got two boys in front of the school. I'm pretty active in the community. I've been a volunteer firefighter for going on nine years, uh, part-time paramedic. I also run a business. I produce events, not on Salt Spring, but pretty much everywhere else in the world. Um, and I've seen our community in a bit of a decline over the last few years. Um, I was at Co-op gas station a couple of weeks ago, and I ran into a friend of mine who's about 27 years old. He's lived on Salt Spring his whole life. And um, he told me, kind of, this kind of hit home, he, He's leaving the island because he feels that we've lost our sense of community. And I think that comes from a lot of the divisiveness that's happening. Because our government, governance really is open in terms of everybody having a voice. Um, I'm firmly committed, despite what some people up here might say, to preserving and protecting this environment. I think all of the candidates are. I think everybody in this room is. We all feel as a community does that the beauty here is something to be cherished and fostered. But how, how we go about doing that is something else. I feel there are basically uh, three main things we need to, to fulfill this mandate. We need a healthy environment, one that we value and foster. Of course we need to preserve and protect the natural environment, 
but we also have to focus on the social, the economic, the cultural, and the physical aspects of our environment. We need a healthy community, one that is free of divisiveness. Uh, divisiveness that arises from fears and misunderstanding, and it also arises from issues such as regulatory overreach that we saw embodied, for example, in the RARBI, which went far too far. Um, this can probably be achieved through open and transparent government. We need full community involvement, and not just not just from a select few. And I would go on for about another three minutes, but my time is up. So I'm just going to say one more thing. If you elect George and I, we won't be the voice of the Islands Trust to Salt Spring. We will be the voice of Salt Spring to the Islands Trust. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. The next speaker, Peter Gold. This is what I will do for our community. I promise to do my utmost to fulfill the trust mandate to preserve and protect both the natural environment and our diverse community. I will start working immediately to restore faith and confidence in the trust. This means finding ways to improve land use decisions and how information is communicated to the community. Yes, I am committed to greater openness between the trustees and the people they serve. I will lobby for a new provincial government study in order to provide community with updated factual data. I will immediately support a legalization of suites and colleges. We need to grow our local economy so we don't experience a mass exodus of young people. Through land use planning, I will encourage projects leading to job creation, especially in green technologies, sustainable farming, the arts, and tourism. I will support the Trust's recent commitment to comprehensive mapping and work with the community to implement RA or amend our current bylaws as may be necessary. So what sets me apart from other candidates? I believe I'm better equipped because of my singular combination of professional skills, skills that are an excellent fit for the time and our present political climate. As a mediator, I build consensus. I know how to manage conflict, find the common ground, and reach agreement. I'm also an arbitrator and am used to making tough decisions. I'm a chartered accountant and will provide professional fiscal management. Three candidates have publicly declared their pro-incorporation preference and two state that the trust is broken. I am not committed to incorporation and I do not believe that the trust is broken. Yes, we do need a provincial study to allow for an informed, well-researched community discussion about our future, but in the meantime, we must have good governance by people who believe in the trust. I want to see this community thrive and natural beauty preserved, and I promise to work full time to achieve those ends. Thank you. I'm prepared that uh, completes the initial addresses by the candidates for the Irish Trust. We'll now go to the CRD. And the first speaker will be Phil Hobbs. Thank you, Harold. I believe I am the best candidate for the position of CRD director because of the suite of skills I have developed as a writer, business person, landlord, librarian, and teacher. I'm responsible, accountable, and capable of effectively working on a number of projects simultaneously. I'm also a good listener, and I believe in fostering an atmosphere of cooperation and collegiality so that we can agree and disagree on the basis of information rather than personalities or political agendas. As I have been retired from teaching for four years, I have the time to devote to the position, which I consider to be a full-time job. With 12 service areas and 14 separate commissions, there are many meetings to attend and a lot of people and groups to consult with. Many of these services require coordination with other levels of government. This simply cannot be done effectively part-time. As your director, I will do my best to listen to Islanders and understand your concerns, to provide regular updates, to consult with other agencies, including Islands Trust and BC Ferries. From my discussions with people to date, I see five key areas that are most in need of attention. A hospital, water and waste management, transportation, affordable housing, and parks and recreation. See my website, carolisles.wordpress.com, for details. Many of the service activities undertaken by the CRD overlap in some way the efforts of the local trust committee. It makes sense for trustees and the CRD director to have regular meetings and find ways to work together. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight 
If you elect me as CRD director, I will do my best to represent you to the CRD rather than the CRD to Saltzman. And I said that first. November 19th is your chance to have a say in how you want your community to move forward. I would be honored to act as your representative. Thank you, Carol. Next speaker will be Pete Tegluth. I wasn't sure how the order was going to be. Folks, this is no picnic, as you probably realize. Even though you can laugh about it at this point, I'm probably the most senior guy on the table here in terms of residence time on the island. I came here 54 years ago, summer of 1957, driving a tractor and two trailers behind it all the way from Ontario, 10 miles an hour. It took us three weeks to do it, night and day. So I almost fell off the road at Racers Pass. So we took a taxi here. I've been in this job before, as you all realize. And at this point, I wasn't particularly going to run until the engineering boondoggles got me really upset. And I thought, well, there's a way around this. At least I'm hoping to. Remember, the CRD is an organization. At the time I was there, in 1996, it had a $200 million budget and was the second largest employer in the whole region. The directors are not like little councillors. They are basically deputized from their own councils to the CRD, and they sure wouldn't want to absorb mistakes made in one particular location that isn't their own. So that's why it's quite a fight to get the money back that was missed in order to take the burden off the people that are hard done by in the water districts. Anyway, I intend to get into that. I'm well acquainted with the law library. I've spent lots of time there during my time last time at the CRD, and it looks like I'll be spending a lot more time there if I get elected. And it's not that I'm looking for litigation, because this doesn't cost anybody anything. It's done in a long time. But usually it's a way of getting them sufficiently upset that they'll do something that's in our benefit, which is, of course, the whole intent of it. Anybody can write a legal opinion, by the way. But that has to happen fast, because what's voted at the Municipal Services Committee winds up on the table either a couple of hours later or two weeks later at the main board. So sometimes you don't have much time to try to stop something that you don't want happening. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. The next speaker will be Wayne McIntyre. Thank you. Salt Spring needs a strong CRD leader with relevant experience to represent and fight for its interests. I'm a proven leader in both business and public way. I have the tools to deliver my platform. I have success in business, large to small. Strong fiscal management skills, both with business and public funds. I promise I will treat your tax dollars as community investments, not expenditures. I've been an elected municipal councillor with water management responsibilities. I have extensive community experience in sustainability matters. I have a balanced skill set and perspective. I have years of dealing with all levels of government. To deal with bureaucracy, one has to understand it, if one ever can. An independent audit of water projects is needed. No more surprises. I will push for a long-term water management plan for water quality, supply, and distribution. This must be an inclusive community process. I will insist on professional project management. Clarify the roles and responsibilities of the CRD director, CRD staff, and commissioners. Economic development. We need to complete the Salt Spring Community Economic Development Commission strategy soon. I'm on that commission as vice chair. We need to appoint a Salt Spring formal representation on the commission for the Chamber of Commerce. They represent over 300 businesses. We need to encourage green opportunities, arts, agriculture, education, technology, housing. I spent six years on an advisory planning commission. Many innovative projects came to us related to green standards and affordable housing options. Affordable housing is a complex matter. I would like to see the Salt Spring Housing Council consult business more on their ideas and get their board of directors in place. Governance. A provincial government-sponsored study is needed. 
I commit to also encouraging joint town hall meetings with the trust and informal meetings as well. I would like to take the next step and use my experience and skills in conjunction with the community input to help move Salt Spring into a new era of cooperation and openness. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wayne. The next speaker is Earth Henry. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak this evening. In November of 2009, I made two promises to my community. Uh, one was to support a governance study, and the second was to build a new library. So 50%, I guess. Once in office, I saw there was much more to do. Let's be honest, I inherited quite a mess with our water systems. The CRD has made bad decisions as far back as 2002 when the process of, of upgrading started. Mistakes were made. I worked to help uh, future er to prevent future errors. Project management is now mandatory, and better management, internal cooperation, and financial reporting practices are in place to prevent future errors. I have helped to obtain a $415,000 in gas tax funds to support the capital upgrades in Fulford, Bettis, Cedars of Swamp, and Fernwood uh, Highlands, lessening the burden on the Salt Spring taxpayers. Transit. During the last three years, we have drastically increased our public transit. We now have, with the exception of the far north of the island and the far south, regular seven-day transit uh, pickups and drive-offs. <coughs> Early in the spring of 2002, we'll see the extensive construction of new sidewalks and bike lanes that will, and these will not result in an increase in our taxes. Turning to housing, I established a housing council in the spring of 2011. The school district has donated the land, the CRD will act as the agent, and the council will provide the oversight during the development and construction of affordable uh, housing for our residents. In terms of recreation, we have upgraded and expanded many trails, including Channel Ridge, Trinket Valley Heights, and Reginald Hill. <coughs> Turning to the economy, in 2010, I set up the Community Economic Development Commission to ensure that tomorrow Salt Spring Island has a vibrant economic and social, uh, and social components which we all desire. Turning to waste, the reconstituted uh, Salt Spring Solid Waste Committee is hired to work on issues of recycling, composting, and the reuse of solid waste. Chapter 2 at the end, that's my record. What's next if I'm reelected? Thank you, guys. Uh, next speaker will be Aaron Wallace. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for leaving your rotten tomatoes at home. Um, I'm running for CRD director <clears throat> because um, I, I'm really sick, actually. That's not why I'm running for CRD director, but I'm really sick, so if my voice comes and goes or I fall over, that's why. <laughs> I'm running for CRD director because I want to give back to this community that has been my beloved home now for over 18 years. I'm also running because I have a vision for the island that I think many of you share. I see a salt spring that is easier and more enjoyable to walk, hike, and cycle around, with a dedicated fulfer to the studious bike lane and car traffic diverted around the beautified Ganges pedestrian commons. I see a more vibrant and diverse local economy that reflects our unique island culture and employs more islanders. I see a salt spring with affordable year-round housing for everyone who lives and works here. I see a salt spring where the majority of the food we consume is grown on the island and where we can drink the water because we've taken the action needed to protect this precious resource. I see a salt spring with respectful, collaborative processes in place for working out our differences and turning community challenges into opportunities. My friend, the world has become a place where uncertainty is the new normal. We are not immune. Our home communities are where we have the greatest amount of power to affect change. I invite you to join me in working together to build local resilience to unstable global conditions while also enhancing quality of life for all islanders. I invite you to join me in working together to create the island we all want to live on. Thank you, Leslie, and my humble apologies for using more name. Next, we will be Ken Lee. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I retired here 20 years ago, and I think most of you know who I am. If you don't, you can find out more at kenleeforcrd.com. I'm running for CRD director for two reasons. One, because I know I can do the job, and two, because I'm not happy with the way we're being treated by Victoria bureaucrats. Let me give you four examples. Being a veteran, when I got here I joined the Legion and got involved with their efforts to get property tax exemption. At least ten Legions in BC enjoy that exemption. I finally reached a bureaucrat in Victoria who explained to me that the exempted Legions in British Columbia are located within municipalities. So I asked him, are you telling me that our self-sustaining legionnaires are second-class citizens because they are not living in this municipality? And he said, yes. <laughs> True. In a discussion with BC Ferries bureaucrat David Hahn about dangerous ferry traffic gridlock in Fulford during the summer, he said, Mr. Lee, there are a lot of pampered whiners on your island. You chose to live there, get used to it. Now, maybe I'm happy, I don't know why, but I, I felt there was a certain amount of arrogance in this man. <laughs> Number three, five years ago, the hard bureaucrats encouraged us to upgrade our Lady Minto surgery. We raised $800,000. Two years ago, VHA bureaucrat Hollett came to a meeting at GISS to inform us that VHA had changed his mind and that the surgery project was cancelled. When Phyllis Bolton asked what happened to the $800,000, this is what he said, and I was there. It's now in bricks and mortar. No more questions, please. I have to catch a ferry back to Victoria. Four, according to last week's driftwood, Hard-working water commissioners in Fulford, including Carol here, have been hung out to dry by a CRD water bureaucrat who won't even reply to emails. Must we put up with more arrogance while we wait three or six years for a governance model? If elected, I can guarantee an outspoken CRD director with strong leadership skills and proven experience in getting attention of bureaucrats in Victoria. Thank you. We'll open um, the questions on the floor. And as I said before, make sure you go to the right microphone. We'll start with the trust microphone, then alternate with the CV back to the trust and so forth. <laughs> and make sure that. <laughs> I think you guys are in point. <laughs> uh, make sure that uh, you keep your questions concise and uh, limited to one half minute. The answers will be allowed a minute for each case. Uh, if you want a supplementary question, I'll use my judgment as to whether it's relevant, in which case the answer would be a half a minute as well. Okay? So we'll start, obviously, with the microphone on my right, I'm the trust. Uh, I'm Philip Jump, I'm the Vice President of ISG. Larry, you stated George and Mark and ISG Slate. And they and ISG are controlled by a development lobby, and the preserve and protect mandate will vanish. It's funny, that didn't happen on Bowen Island. They've been in a corporation for 10 years. George and Mark are not even members of ISG. Your statements are false. This kind of rhetoric has divided our community in the past. Please explain to us where you got your information. Larry? Thank you very much for the question, Cliff. Uh, I'm sorry they're upset about uh, being associated with the ISG. Um, this, is what I, this is what I believe, and apparently mistakenly. So I, I do plead guilty to letting my passion for this island show through in, uh, in that blog posting. Who are the uh, developers? Well, I do believe that there are people out there who want to see unfettered development on our beloved island. They believe that the island's trust is thwarting their desires which it is and is designed to do, and want it neutered and dismantled. They, uh, I, don't, I don't want to see our island become like Richmond, Surrey, or Victoria. We are different and have different priorities, and uh, that's why I live here. Thank you. Where did you get your information? Where, do you have any facts to back up what you say? Supplementary question. I just told you I, I believe that I was correct in stating that, but apparently I'm not, and apparently they're offended by being associated with the ISG. Well, 
This is excellent. I was the first one here. I want to thank David and Mark and George and Leslie and Wayne for responding and writing to our questions. We appreciate that at the Arts Council. My question is to all of you, or some of you, but uh, we in the arts uh, are very concerned about the downturn, as everyone else is in the, in, in the economy. And so what we're asking is, what role do you see the Arts Council and the arts having in enhancing economic development on the island? Um, that's the best of the CRP. So we'll start at the far end. Um, I think there's two reasons why people are in the two drivers, really, for, uh, for tourism here. One is our natural beauty, and the other is the arts. Um, I mean, that's, that's really what the market is all about, is the arts. So um, I think there's a great uh, unexplored potential there for developing um, all the different arts in our community as businesses. Um, I have had a wonderful discussion with two of the new executive members of the Chamber of Commerce, and I understand that they're really taking um, uh, steps to make membership in the Chamber more relevant and affordable to the arts community, and they're specifically targeting those one-person businesses that I know, because those folks have been telling me how much they've been suffering. Um, since people started staying home because they can't afford to travel. Uh, I did reply to a question there three days ago. I guess you didn't get it. Is that true? It may be there in my inbox. Yes. I've well, has responded. I know that. You mentioned the people that have. You, you left me out. I no, I However, I, I would say it's okay. I did suggest at the Fulton meeting that. Uh, any time a public building is built in this community, such as the new library, that a 1% of the cost of that uh, building be placed in art made in the community. It's the 1% rule. It's quite common in the federal government and other countries in the world. I think we should be doing it here very carefully. We've got some beautiful public buildings now. We should make sure they're filled with the art of the one blocks we have in the southern. That was one suggestion. The other one was that maybe the public lake area should one day become a bank center where artists, poets, uh, dancers, musicians could come and take a one-week course, winter or summer, and maybe stay in some of the B&Bs that we have empty in the winter, and do their thing. Thank you. I hear where I responded with in great detail. I have a lot of experience with tourism and the arts. I uh, was responsible for three large uh, Chamber of Commerce tourism centers on the north shore of Vancouver, and uh, the arts was always a big part of uh, our activity. As far as the specifics here for uh, Salt Spring, there is a CRD study that we just completed of 100, identified $170 million in activity in the region. And what I'm looking for is to try to break out what that value is for Salt Spring, because I think there's a lot of opportunities that will come out of that study. They will have uh, probably action plans that we'll be able to tie into. And I think that's something that our Salt Spring Community Economic Development Commission is going to be looking at, because there's a great opportunity for the arts, tourism, education, and actually having some seminars I, I see possibly on the ferries, much like they do with some of the uh, activities with the fish biologists that they have here in the summer. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, the very building is standing in the house I'm in above. In fact, uh, when I was at the CRD, this was a shell here which wasn't even drywalled yet. And I was coming back from Municipal Services Committee with Bob Clark uh, in, uh, in the Western District. 
to the main uh, meeting. He said, I'd like to help you with that. Uh, have you got an invoice or an estimate or something for that buy volume job that needs doing? And I said, yeah, I got one for 90,000 bucks. From, I picked it up at the Lidurius Inn the other night. Just off the cuff like that. Well, I waived that to the board, and they approved 90,000 bucks to finish the drywalling. walling. That was, uh, would have been in 92, 94, somewhere in there. So uh, now what we need is a dance floor. Uh, I've, I've been a schlepper around the theater all along, not just this one, but uh, Nan Hall and Boss Center, we were over the other end there. So, so the arts are close to my heart. You can best for sure to that, but if, if you're a little better, except if you sent in my mailbox, that would have helped. <laughs> Thank you. I don't get the vote box very often. Okay, that's about it. Thank you. So, so do you think did you sleep at all? That's a serious question. I'll answer that. There was no protection for this building. It was a shell. It, a construction had come to a complete stop. All right. So, yes, I was in this building with the uh, insurance company's endorsement. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I think we all agree that we took the Salt Springs Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I also have a question here. Um, you know, at the present time, taxpayers do provide some funding <coughs> to the arts community both the Art Spring and the uh, Salt Spring Arts Council. It's a, the amount is under $90,000. It's targeted, and with respect to Arts Spring, it goes directly to the maintenance and uh, operation of the theater. The council uses their portion to support such programs as part of the schools. Is it enough? Probably not. Um, it's, it's, a, it's probably the large, if we could pull it out, it's probably the largest sector of our economy. It's very hard to pull those kinds of numbers out. So we have to figure, uh, there are ways that we can probably increase funding. Uh, there's a regional commission that we, which we're not a member of, which we could probably uh, make application to. It would require some funding. We would have to come to the taxpayers to seek support for us to do that piece, but it's a, it's a, it certainly is a possibility. Um, that's just sort of one of the things. Okay, I'll come back to this again. Um, I also could respond. <laughs> um, I don't believe that the arts are for they're what make our lives healthy and uh, both psychologically and spiritually. They're vital to a healthy community. And actually buy the ideas for how to get the arts uh, more marketed. Um, I'm sure we have more bookstores per capita than Sydney does, and we should be having literary weekends. We should be marketing ourselves. We've got publishers and writers and author, illustrators and poets. We should be making much more of that in the off season, in the summer when the school buses aren't being used. We could have targeted bus tours. Some people don't like doing the studio tour by themselves. They feel that they're compelled to, to buy something when they go into a studio. But if they're part of a bus tour, it's not so intimidating. Also, it means that some of those studios that are off the main, that are further off the main roads, would be um, more easily accessed. Thank you. Uh, I think the question is relevant to the trustee candidates as well, so would any of the trustee candidates like to respond? The arts are a natural expression of a very creative community. In fact, I've been really encouraged to hear that the Chamber, uh, the SSAC, and other groups are converging in their ideas around the arts. This is very good news. The one part of your questionnaire that was very specific to the trust had to do with housing. And my response was that we're very hopeful in the area of legalizing the suites and cottages for three main community aims. One is obviously to provide low-cost housing. Another is to provide mortgage helpers for young people um, starting their, their first home. And another is to, uh, to provide living support for those of us who are aging in our own homes and might, might like to have some there. 
We must take great care around water and around neighborhoods that may feel stress. And the administration of any such program must make sure that the housing remains in the affordable sector. Thank you. Carol? Yes. I am a full participant and a partaker, I guess, of the arts. But I believe that we can build on what we already have here. We've already started that. The provincial government paid for a tourism study last year. The Chamber of Commerce and the arts community need to work together. And I think that we can, without doing anything other than getting organized, we can explore the niche and experiential tourism. And some of us have talked a bit about that. The Salt Spring Arts Council has already started that. They did a creative holidays on Salt Spring brochure. Judy Wheaton offered pottery. Who wouldn't want to come and sketch with Bob Bateman? Those are the kinds of things that we can do without changing anything on the island. The B&Bs are already here. The restaurants are already here. The people are already here. Let's do it. George? Thank you for the question, Pat. I am a director of the Chamber of Commerce. I didn't mention that in my two minutes introduction. But we are very supportive of the work that you are doing in the Arts Council, and we thank you for it. On housing, I think there are a number of additional initiatives that could be undertaken. Certainly should be examined in Ganges. I think Ganges, I would like to see more housing in Ganges. I think there's room for densification there. I think there is room for work to live. The advantage of that is providing studio apartments, perhaps loft accommodation above studios. It would enable people to live and work in the downtown core, to be car independent, so we would be low GHG emissions. They are certainly two initiatives that I think that would be, were I to be honored with a position of trustee, that I would ask the planners to investigate. I can get very excited about this one. And the Salt Spring School of Fine Arts, I thought this was my idea until I discovered some others had already started to work on it. But we have many wonderful artists on this island, and who would love to have something more to do. And we could be bringing students in from around the world, quite frankly, to learn at their feet. So my vision is this wonderful school. I have got very excited about the new property on the north side of Bullock Lake. And there's some talk that they are in, there's a possibility, maybe, hopefully with a bit of luck, that they may be encouraged to build an art school on that property. If we could tie this in with affordable housing as well, wouldn't that be wonderful? But it's a real dream, and I think it's achievable, and let's hope it happens. And Larry. You have my reply already, and many of the ideas that have been just stated, I would certainly echo when you find them in my document. Thank you. Next question will be from the trust side. You forgot about me. It always happens when I'm last. And yeah, there's been a lot of great ideas floated out here. We've got a super talented community, arts, culture. I mean, there's just so much happening here that we could use and dovetail in with tourism. I'd like to see more festivals on the island, bringing more people over here. I think the economic opportunities for people who aren't involved in the arts can be improved through utilizing culture and festivals and that sort of thing. And I'd like to echo a little bit about what George said with the work studios downtown. I think Gaston Alley, somewhere down the road, is a prime opportunity for retail space down below and the work studios up above. I think that would be really cool for downtown. Thank you. Okay, next question will be from the trust side. Hi, my name is John Burrard. It's a question for Mark Wyatt. On your website, you say that the island has suffered misfortunes since the last election. The second point on this is that the trustees doubled their salary a while back. And I'd like to ask you, 
What have they done with Prom Act 2? And in order to correct this, would you be willing to pledge to have an immediate 50% salary reduction when you come in? Thank you. Well, I wasn't the one that raised the salaries, but the, uh, the trust budget has gone up 67% in the last six years. There's been a tremendous amount of overspending. Now, we're looking at things like... The question is about salary, not about the trust budget. You put it, it's not the number, no, no, no. it's on your website, sir. Yeah, and it's a fact that the, the trust trustees, not just locally, but island-wide, have voted to more than double the salaries, from around $12,000 to about $28,000. It's a fact. I didn't do it. I'm just echoing what's happened. Are you willing to um, reduce the salary by 50% when you come in? If everybody else is sure, why not? Thank you. Hey, can I ask that uh, if you want to ask a supplementary question after the first question has been answered, then indicate so. Don't just wait in, please. Okay, the next will be from the CRD side. Yes, this is a question for Carol Piles. Um, you coined a phrase at the last, uh, the, last, uh, uh, count, uh, the last meeting of the candidates, and you said, it's not the Canadian way. And that was said in connection with the filing of a petition uh, that had just occurred. And it was a petition which alleged certain breaches of the conflict of interest rules in the legislation that dictates the mandate. Um, I've never heard of a Canadian way for dealing with those problems. And I would like you to explain what you meant by that and to give us some examples of how this Canadian way actually works in resolving this kind of a dispute where a legal, a legal a breach is being alleged. I'm confused, Shelley. Uh, it's not a phrase I would ever have used, but I'm absolutely positive I did not say that. <laughs> the Canadian way? No. Well, I believe what I said was, first you listen, then you talk, then you legislate. And that would be my position. First you listen to why they made the decision, then you talk to them to see if there are ways to resolve it. And if you can't resolve it that way, then you legislate. And if you want to go back to the recordings, I'll, um, I'll stand by that. Thank you. Dave, would like to make a comment. Yeah, I'm very sorry to see Kara Wiles have to take that question because I was the one who used the phrase the Canadian way. May I? something first. No, please don't. At, <laughs> at the Fulford meeting, you were characterized as a former Supreme Court judge. No. Do you wish that characterization to stand? No, I wasn't characterized that way. I said I was a retired member of the BC Supreme Court Judiciary, and that is exactly what I was. I see. The Canadian way I think it would be not to lead to litigation mm -hmm. before other possibilities were exhausted. Mm -hmm. I'll give credit to one of my fellow candidates, Mr. Grove, because I think he was very effective on this point when it came up at Fulford. Using his professional credentials, he was very clear that litigation is not something you lead to. There's a letter in the newspaper this last week saying that the litigators had to go directly to litigation owing to a 45 man, owing to a 45 day time limit on litigation, uh, or for launching litigation. Unfortunately, that particular letter leads me to believe only that these petitioners were bent on litigation from the outset. <laughs> Of legislation. I took on for the trust side and 
Everybody will have a second chance if you go on. And I think the trust is going to be busy for a while. Go ahead. each of you referred to the petition as either malicious or akin to punching a neighbor in the nose. Now you claim the professional background in diplomacy and mediation, trained to gather facts, hear all sides, and then be an honest broker, qualities of value and a trustee. I would like to know if you have discussed the petition with any of the petitioners to understand why they chose to participate. Have you examined the court filings? Have you taken time to understand the law? If not, why not? Diplomacy sometimes isn't for sissies either. Uh, it can be a fairly tough business. I based my remarks, I called the uh, suit malicious, based on its timing in relation to the election, and based on the punitive measures sought in the, uh, in the petition. It seeks uh, personal reimbursement from the accused people. Um, I don't think that that is, uh, is a very fair way to proceed. And what I was addressing, not what was done or may have been done, what I was addressing is the process and how it was dealt with. That's what I mean by it. As I said um, in full, the litigation is just a part of a continuum. It starts with a discussion. You start to try to resolve your issues among yourselves. If you can't do it by yourself, you are a mediator. Um, and ultimately, ultimately, at the very end, if none of that's working, and then certainly try to go to litigation. But I never was talking about the issues or the, uh, or the other allegations. That wasn't my point at all. I think I've got something to say on that. I'm one of the petitioners, and it, it's absolutely insane to watch people who are experienced trustees with past experience uh, qualify a breach of the conflict of interest rules uh, in, in that kind of uh, mellifluous fashion, and to boot, add on an intent on the part of the petitioner. This is ridiculous. When you're caught with a situation where you have 45 years to deal with it, I can just see that that being sort of a horse traded down the road until it gets totally lost in the nether world of where conflict ends and uh, otherwise uh, private interest starts. So uh, I, I challenge Mr. Borman to go and, and go back to school, which is what happened when he first got elected to the, to the uh, trust, as also the CRD directors. We all go to school in Vancouver a couple of days and we are drilled on how to deal with conflict of interest which is front and center to what we're supposed to learn. Thank you very much. Yeah. The question is addressed to specific members of the trust. We have another member. That was addressed to me as well, uh, Harold. Um, thank you for the uh, question. Yeah, I too, like my colleagues, was troubled very much by the timing. It looked to me to come in two days before the start of the, uh, before the end of the nomination. Uh, it's simply a, a largely a tactic to scare people away from running. Uh, and so the, the optics were bad. We did not choose the timing. It was chosen by the petitioners, and that's unfortunate. Thank you, gentlemen. None of you answered my question, which is whether or not you are acquainted with the legalities of this case. I, I will say, I, you know, I'm not um, a fully a, a conversant with the legalities of this case. What I was talking about in Fulford was the process, not the issues. Thank you. My question was about the issue. Thank you. Sorry. Um, Three of our large drinking water lakes had serious alcohol this year, which meant that the people who live on those lakes couldn't drink the water. Uh, this is a long-standing problem, and for that reason, there are two management plans created by scientists, community, and the government that have identified the causes and uh, actions that can be taken for Cushion and for St. Mary Day. And my question to you is, if elected, will you implement the management plans uh, and I ask that question acknowledging that they're not all within the power of the CRD, but those things that are, could you please 
Say what you would do. It is the best of the CRD, so we'll start at this end of the CRD. Yes, of course. Uh, quality of drinking water is a prime problem. Mostly what we have is cyanobacteria, and that's as a result of too much phosphorus. We have to find ways to reduce the phosphorus loading in all our lakes. It's the only way to improve the quality of our water, and it's extremely important. Anything that I, as CRD director, have any jurisdiction over will be done. Thank you very much. Um, yes, of course I would. There is, as you know, there are, there is the, let's see, it's difficult to implement everything for the simple reason that we don't have authority over it. But there are pieces that we can do it and uh, will, can do, and I, I'm certainly going to be there to undertake to do it. Uh, I guess really, I, I come to water late. When I first did this job, I didn't think of the, the significance of, of potable water for our residents because I just drank it. I didn't, it just didn't even occur to me. Over the past three years, I've recognized it. There's been some attempt to do some small things, uh, particularly in pushing like the, uh, the control of the parkland in the southeast corner. I think we've done a little piece there. Uh, the problem with the sewage, excuse me, the, the, uh, the effluent flowing from the, the, the fields around St. Mary's Lake, well, that's a whole other issue. I don't know how we're going to address that. Uh, we can probably upgrade or demand that they're upgraded. And so we will look at, continue to look at doing things that we can. Okay. Well, we have to remember that water comes from two places, surface water, the lakes, and groundwater. There was a paper given at the University of Edmonton the other day saying that the island's home to 9,780 full-time residents and several thousand part-time seasonal visitors. Like most of the Gulf Islands, groundwater is the primary source of potable water for approximately half the residents on Salt Spring. Lakes provide the rest of the residential commercial water use as one of Canada's top tourist retirement destinations is expected that the current and future development pressures and lake quality issues mean that groundwater will continue to be a desirable source of water for many decades. But this geologist, Pat Lapkovich from Nanaimo, has pointed out that our water delivery groundwater aquifers are already stressed. If I was elected uh, CRD director, uh, I would, first thing I'm trying to do is get a feasibility study of producing pipe sewage treatment to all the uh, residences around the north end of St. Mary's Lake. And it's very important, I think it can be done, it will cost money, but we have to look into it and get on with it. Otherwise, we're going to have these continuing algal blooms. Thank you. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a difficult and heavy subject, but uh, uh, when the uh, Ganges Pollution Plan was upgraded, that was in my last year at the CRD 96, we had a chemical engineer on our liquid waste committee, and he negotiated with the outfit that made the membranes, which by the way are also useful for filtering water, uh, drinking water. Um, that it be a demonstration plan. We lost, we, we thereby saved a huge bundle of money. And I think we may have to go to some kind of a membrane filtration system on the lake and, uh, and go from there because uh, the other alternative is to treat the lake itself perhaps with aluminum silica or some uh, compound that will in fact uh, take the uh, uh, particulate matter out because it's, it's very heavily uh, infested with uh, junk that's floating around at all levels in the water column. Thank you very much. It's been really interesting for me because I've talked to an awful lot of people about uh, water issues because I knew they were so important, which they, this water is critical to all of us. I, I find it really interesting because you're starting, starting off with one common denominator, water. You have individual wells, you have wells that are shared, you have CRD commissions with their water systems, we have the North Salt Spring water system, we have other private systems. And you talk to people and they all have different ideas of where things should evolve. So I think one of the big things to start with, so you, go, you don't throw uh, good money after bad, is to make sure that there's an overall plan and engage the entire community to make sure that we have a, a direction, we know what the costs are, 
and evolve to a long-term plan that makes sense. Thank you. The work has already been done in this community around how to protect and improve water quality in our drinking water lakes, and that's what Maxine was talking about, are those stewardship, those management plans. And, yes, I would move very quickly to implement them. And I have to mention that a former CRD director, Gary Holman, introduced a septic monitoring bylaw, which was a key recommendation and a key CRD responsibility within those watershed management plans, and it apparently went through the third meeting through the CRD and then was dropped by our current director. I would also like to work very closely with people on the island who know a lot about water. We're very lucky that way. There's a lot of people here on the island who know a lot about water quality and how to improve it to develop an island-wide plan to improve our water quality. I'm also old enough to remember the final days when government engaged in public awareness and education of people around important issues like water. I'd like to do some of that as well. Thank you. Next question from the first lady. Should you be elected to the trust, what will your priorities be? Thanks, Julia. My first priority would be around the housing issue, as I already spoke to that. My second priority would be around the RAR bylaw and getting a healthy made-on-salt spring solution in place. We have a lot of ways now to move forward on that particular issue. I'm also very, very encouraged by the way our fire district is getting along so successfully with its plans for the new fire hall. They have a ways to go. Not all issues are resolved, but I think we can all take a page out of their book in terms of community process. I would also like to flag something on that particular file, and that is that one thing that's of huge significance there is the fate of the old fire hall. I think we have to ask our fire trustees to hold it in reserve so that there is a possibility of acquiring it for public use. It's a signature property in Ganges and very important to all of us. Thank you for the question. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
and they still don't have an answer. Now, those sorts of dysfunctions really must be rooted out of the system. That doesn't mean to say we make the, the, the application process easy, but we have to make it efficient. How easy it is depends on how high we raise the bar, and in my view, we want to raise the bar very high. But we're a community. We have to assist each other, and we're not assisting uh, uh, our economy and, and our other community members by seven and a half years and four hundred thousand dollars. I would want to start immediately to restore faith and confidence in the trust, which seems to have been eroded somewhat amongst, uh, among some of our community in any event. Um, there are various things fueling that, basically a frustration, fear, and some breakdown in communication. Frustration at the way um, process, uh, things are processed through the trust itself, so through land applications and such. Um, I would instigate right away a, a management review of how it's done and what the holdups are and where the frustrations lie so that we can address them right on. I'd also be reviewing the financial structure of the trust and how that works at the same time. Um, with regards to fears, there are all sorts of fears out there about what our island is going to look like and where we're going. We need to talk about those fears and make sure that we all understand what's going on and, and what's worrying us so that we can address them. In terms of communications, the trust isn't communicating as well as it should with the community. There's somebody right now taking videos of, of the meetings. That should be done officially by the trust. Thank you. Uh, I think what some of my colleagues uh, sometimes characterize as delays uh, could also just equally be seen as due diligence and very careful consideration of land use decisions. Uh, my three priorities as, uh, as trustee uh, will first of all be listening to the community and restoring civility to trust proceedings. Um, and uh, secondly, addressing the uh, riparian areas regulation file, the uh, affordable housing file, and the area farm plan file. And uh, thirdly, to uh, find a way to get the local committees in which islanders uh, from many backgrounds offer their expertise to the trust uh, back up and running. Thank you. A lot of great ideas, and, and they all have merit. I think one of the biggest black marks in our community in a long time has been when Salt Spring Coffee left the island. Yeah. And yeah. We're, we're a green community. We have some of the greenest regulations in Canada, but we can go a lot further to developing a deep green economy and encouraging business to come back to Salt Spring, not necessarily Salt Spring Coffee, but I would think that there are a lot of talented islanders who may want to start businesses on Salt Spring, but are pretty afraid of the process. I mean, seven years and 400,000, 15 months for Mickey and 175,000, three economic studies just to be told at the end of that whole process, after he had developed what would have been one of the greenest companies on the planet, um, that it just doesn't feel right and you're afraid of urban sprawl. That, that killed Salt Spring in terms of economic development around the world and left a black mark that it's going to take us years to recover from. I'd like us to start working towards encouraging deep green businesses on Salt Spring to come here and thrive and help us to create opportunities for families and young people to live and work and build careers here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take uh, one more question from each microphone and uh, then have about a five or six minute break. And uh, the first people that are next in line, make sure that you're next in line when we start again after the break. Okay? So this will start taking out to the CRD Center. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many laudable services and caring staff available at Lady Minto Hospital. However, more spaces are required for our long-term staff 
and expectal care for psychiatric people. There are 2,000 people, or more than 2,000 people on this island that have signed postcards urging for the restoration of our operating room. My question to you is, how committed, and I guess especially to the CRD, but I know the trusts are interested as well, how committed are you to seeing the upgrade to the services that are required and the reopening of our operating room at our hospital to turn it into a kind of rural hospital that would really, truly serve the needs of Salt Spring people? Question of first and CRD. We'll start at this end. Well, so it's like, you know, some of the... I said time to start at this end. I believe we were shabbily treated over the operating room, over the surgery, and it was a disgrace. But it's more than just having a surgeon on site. We have to take care of our nurses and make sure they have a place to live. If we don't support our doctors, they're not going to want to stay, and new doctors won't want to come here. I think the strong focus on getting the surgery back has moved us away from looking at the bigger picture. If we don't take care of what we've still got, then we have no hope of getting the surgery back. I love our hospital. I've had surgery there. I've been taken there in emergencies. I've been sent off to Victoria and Duncan. I have a nasty habit of falling off horses. And they saved my life, my daughter's life, when she went into anaphylactic shock. It's incredibly important to have that hospital here and functioning at its optimum level. My daughter has just moved back here, and she doesn't have a family doctor. And so I think the whole issue here is so much bigger than the OR, and it's very worrying. I must be really excited about this one. Well, I am too, but I don't, excited is not the appropriate word. There's a whole bunch of things that just raise, this raises just a whole, the surgery is just one piece, as Carol has pointed out, and Phyllis knows this too. You know, I just want to step back and say, five years ago there was, before the completion of the new hospital tower at the Royal Jubilee, and the announcement of the two hospitals in central Vancouver Island, Courtney Comox and then the one further north, we were number two on the list of replacement hospitals, okay? So these hospitals have all been put in place now, and there's no longer a list of priority replacement for hospitals. So we're no longer on a list, period. And the upgrade to our surgery is just one of those pieces. Now, you know, there's been some effort to sort of rein in the VHA by the Capital Regional Hospital Board by telling them they can't repurpose the surgery. And the second piece was that they were informed that it would be appropriate for them to go back, that is, VHA would go back to the community to consult as to what should happen in it. It hasn't happened, okay? And the third thing is that... I'm sorry, okay. Two is enough. Well, I think this came through. Well, Phyllis, I'm with you. I've never met such a tough lady in my life. She's not prepared to take no for an answer, and neither am I. If I'm elected CRD director, I'm not going to take no. I've been 20 years on this island, and I can think of three situations where I was told no. They raised the ferry first in 1998. We got out there, and they rolled it back. When we had organized high-speed internet for the Beaver Point Road, we were told no, it can't be done. It's now being done. I am absolutely convinced that this injustice has to be rectified. My own uh, daughter-in-law had a baby here in December. She was worried the whole time about what might happen if there was a problem uh, that required some kind of intervention. She didn't want to get the ferry in Vesuvius and find out it was a dangerous cargo ferry and have to tell the captain, I'm a dangerous cargo. <laughs> that kind of thing. And so my, I'm committed to the idea that when you deal with Victoria, if they say no, 
You just keep going until they say yes. And that's what's going to happen. We're going to get this surgery. You may recall, Phyllis, that we had quite a battle about the affiliated status of Greenwoods with regard to property that Greenwoods owned. And we followed the Queen Alexandra Hospital case with bated breath until we were in the clear and still kept the board at Greenwoods, on which I was nine years in recent time. Now, I would look at that case again and see what in it applies to the case of private money being put into a public edifice like that and what compensations can be made as a result of that. I'm sure nobody's looked at this legally yet. At least I haven't heard of anybody doing that. I'll certainly do that. It's another case to gob up on at the law library and also chat with the VA people at the same time. And who knows, maybe I can get some answers from them because I don't think anybody's followed it up legally. Thank you. Ms. Bolden, we had an opportunity to chat on the street the other day, and I really respect what you're trying to do. But the issues of delivery of health care really arouse community passions, and understandably so. I think one of the big things here is, like last year, there was a study done, and the focus was going to be on the mental health support, and the second part was the inadequate ER services that are going to be addressed in the medium term. So as we all know, everything's a trade-off. All the dollars come from one spot. As far as your specific question goes, I think there is a proposal by VHA to bring in a consultant next year and to look at the site, the provision of services on site. So I think that could be an opportunity. And if I was elected, I'd certainly push hard to make sure that every opinion is heard, including the residential staff and the medical staff, the administrative staff, and the people in the community, so we can take a look at what it should look like on the site. Thank you. I know this is a really important issue for you, and you've been tireless in the amount of work that you've put into it. And I have to be honest with you and just say that the jury is out for me right now. I know the taxpayers have a serious bone to pick over having raised all of that money and having that money go into a surgery and then having surgery just yanked like a carpet out from underneath your feet. And on the other hand, we have most of the doctors in the community speaking with one voice in that letter in the newspaper and saying that they don't feel that there is a need for surgery and that there are other needs that are more important. I haven't yet looked at the emergency planning side of the surgery. Someone mentioned to me that they thought that having a surgery that actually works in a surgeon is in one of our emergency plans for Salt Spring. So I'd like to look at that as well. And then there's the broader matter, really, of setting priorities. Garth would like a supplementary answer. Yeah. 30 seconds. Okay. One of the bigger pieces that I think you fail to recognize is that it's an attitude within VHA. VHA is a body that has decided that they can deliver quality and timely health care by centralizing services. And that's the principal reason for us losing pieces of our hospital on the island. There's not much evidence to say that that's the best way of doing it. You look at other jurisdictions across the country where they decentralize services, and that is reestablished cottage hospitals, which is what we are. And so in a way, that's the piece, that's the battle we have to fight. We have to fight the battle of centralization as opposed to decentralization. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I have been doing my homework. I have been meeting with members of the various commissions around the island. I haven't been around to everybody yet, but I've been around to most of them. And there's a lot of needs in this community, and a lot of them are going to cost a lot of money. So, you know, to make promises ahead of time and say, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that, I think is really not wise. But all those things need to be looked at. And as a community, I mean, I will need your help to set some priorities that it works that work for everybody. Question for the first. I'm speaking, I'm Janice Lakov, and I'm speaking because I'm sure I represent many citizens who are really deeply concerned about the level of animosity over local politics. And because of that, a few of us, we've tried to keep um, our group fairly representative of people who are concerned about local politics, have started a group called Call Unity. And we'd like to um, get a consensus building process going for a survey, broad-based survey, to reach consensus on community values, what's important. And we'd like to know from the trust candidates if you're interested in being involved and learning more and hopefully supporting it. I had an opportunity to speak on the telephone with Jan about this, and it is very, very encouraging because it's precisely around bringing people together. So indeed, on a personal level as a trustee, I'd be very happy to join in the process and contribute what I could. And indeed, one can imagine specific situations where people, a group of people, are in conflict um, over an issue where an organization like Community could do wonderful work. In, in bringing people together. If you can just get people to talk and understand one another, it's remarkable how much the hostility drains away. Jan, I applaud your efforts and would be very happy to be um, to listen to your group and uh, perhaps be part of it. It's up to each one of us as individuals to take responsibility for how we respond to things. And each one of us must pledge to be civil. It's not just the six people up here or one or two of you. We must, that's all of us have to do it. And consensus and consensus building is the only way forward. You sit down, you agree, or you decide on and talk about what you agree on, identify where you don't agree, and then in a civil manner, you try and solve those problems. And I pledge to do that. Thank you. I enjoyed meeting you on Saturday night, Jan. It was good to get an opportunity just to exchange views, and it was a very exciting initiative, I think, to come up with Calm Unity. And I love the name. Uh, I think it's so appropriate. Uh, I'm, I was delighted that a friend of mine, John McPherson, is a member of that group too. And uh, John is a, a first-class chap, a very honourable, uh, good facilitator, uh, and I've no doubt that the, you'll make a success of this, and I wish it. If I can do anything as a trustee or indeed as a, as a, a, a resident of Salt Spring and Citizen, I'll be able to make them. Hey, you're singing my song. I, 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 we need to talk to another, one another. We need to understand one another. We need to be able to make decisions together. So, yes, you caught my support and I'll help you in every possible way I can. Thank you for bringing your group to our attention, Jan. I've spoken uh, about your grassroots movement before in very positive ways, and I'm glad that even in a brief time during this campaign, you've made great strides. Um, I, I would caution you about uh, asking the, the trustees to get too involved. They tend to be lightning rods these days, so you may be uh, better to, uh, to continue the work at the grassroots level and then deliver your deliverables to, to the, the trustees. Um, but I have to applaud your your efforts. It is ongoing here. It's what already makes Salt Spring a model to the world. 
and the dialogue process is utilized in other parts of the world, the Middle East in particular, and I think it's extremely valuable. And the grassroots component of it is something that we see in many other facets of island life. And so I applaud that not only in your efforts but in other areas of island life. Thank you. Hi, John. The one thing that's, well, there's many things missing in governance on Salt Spring, but balance and inclusiveness from the community is one of them that has been sorely lacking lately. I think that's what's caused a lot of divisiveness. So your group, which is pretty diverse and open to everyone in the community, I believe, is a valuable asset. I think you're going to do good work. Of course, as a trustee, I would be open to hearing everything you have to say. I do have to agree with Larry on this one point, though, that trustees actually being actively involved in the group may be a little bit challenging because we don't want to get into any other negative situations. But I'm looking forward to hearing more from your group. Thank you. Okay, we'll take a five-minute break. We always have to be short to get to the end of the session. This question is for Garth Hendren, please. I refer to the Venice and Fulton water supplies under the control of CRD. CRD has maladministered these systems for years, and nothing has been done to bring them to account, let alone justice, and hold them responsible. You have advocated that our best policy is to suck it up and not change them legally because we will land up not only paying their legal bills, but all the cost overruns and remediations they have incurred out of sheer incompetence. Plus, their markup, apparently, to add egregious insult to egregious injury. Be that as it may, sir, the question is, can you please tell the meeting here why nothing appears to have changed for the better during your last three years as CR director here? Why you give to me at least the appearance of merely being a mouthpiece for CRD's administration, and most importantly, why I hope that you will change anything for the better in the next three years. Thank you very much. I mean, I really, there's so much, let's see, a minute, okay. Have things changed? Well, first of all, I mean, you've identified all of the problems. I don't think we have to do that. There have been some attempts to correct some of them. The capacity of the CRD has been expanded in terms of staff. We've been looking at that. They've actually considered one of the, and these are small pieces, okay. There's been issues about the financial reporting, and that's been addressed, is being addressed as we speak. There has been support put in place for the administration of the services, which we didn't have before, identified specifically. There has, there was a forensic account, audit needs to be done for both Bettis and Fulford in 2010. The project management has been removed from the CRD, that is, as an in-house activity, and is now assigned to each of the projects for the upgrades, because in most instances, except for Fernwood Highlands, it's continuing projects as opposed to new pieces. Is it all, is it complete? Of course not. Will we be able to recover the resources that were misspent? I find it very difficult to see how we could do that. The way the organization is set up, it's, the commissions are actually entities of the CRD, and therefore the money that would have to be obtained would have to come from the commission themselves. They don't have the resources. So, is it perfect? No. Will it get better? I'm hoping it will get better. Ron, Dane standing right behind you, is leading a group of people who are making every effort to make it a more effective and efficient system for all of our water districts. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Chris. My only one quick follow-up question, sir, if I may very quickly, is, 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 is to ask the other CRD candidates if they would like to add that add to that, because I will be on their case as sure as hell in two years' time if things haven't been proved. <laughs> I'm going to take this one on. I personally pay more for water than I pay in property tax and hydro combined. So I'm just as angry as you are about the whole thing. That's what got me here in the first place. Um, I think we need to change big things at the CRD. We need to change staff attitudes and responsibilities. And if that means going to the minister, I will do that. And if it means going to the media, I'll do that too. I've been around the island talking to some of the commissions, and the word I got back is that the CRD engineering department has installed Cadillacs where only a Chevrolet was required. <laughs> I'm adjacent lost trust in the CRD, and for good reason. Yeah, yeah. Um, if elected, I will log in progress for an independent review of all the errors and delays in the various water districts here. I'll be looking for a report with recommendations as to how those errors and delays can be avoided in the future with the guarantees that the CRD will accept full responsibility for any such errors and delays. And I will also lobby for full compensation for affected taxpayers. The structure has to change so that the commissions here are not in a loop that makes it impossible for them to get justice. One thing I want to do is uh, find out what happens in the other jurisdictions that have problems like this and uh, take their recommendations to a, a charter of uh, engineers that will be recruited. Some of them already volunteered on this. And uh, see what can be done about it, including the people who uh, know their way around engineering law, which also has its, uh, its own corpus of, uh, of um, prescriptions for difficulties of this sort. I'm sure there is an answer to the engineering uh, troubles that we've had. And uh, it's not going to come from the cop shop, which would be the uh, CRD's uh, engineering department itself. You're not going to get the answers there, obviously. This is what they've done. This is what uh, they can rest their case on. So uh, we'll, see. we'll see what the precedents are. Thank you. Last summer in a driftwood, there was a, I think, uh, Director Hendren said that we shouldn't do it on it. I think it's absolutely essential that audit is conducted because I don't know how you can have a way forward unless you have a proper audit and know what you are dealing with. That doesn't happen again. The other thing is that my deliberations, I think I've probably met face to face with about 500 people and several people down in Fulford were talking about the cost of the water. One gentleman was 85 years old, he said, I have to move. My water bill is $225 a month. That's, that's crazy. So we definitely need to do something about that. One of the things that uh, is possible once all the dust settles is why is there not a person dealing with water living on something? I met three uh, people that were in a coffee shop in Fulford, and they go back and forth and probably actually work for about four or five hours a day if they could count in their travel time. So why wouldn't we take a look at having those people here, the right people? My name is, is Hugh Greenwood, and uh, I have some interest in the water resources in South Spring Island. Uh, Maxine likely will be able to extract some answers from the assembled group, but I would like to pursue this a little farther. We live on an island. Uh, all the water we use, from tooth brushing to toilet flushing, falls from the sky. About 95 or 94 percent of it either evaporates or runs off. The remaining 5 percent or 6 percent dribble is all we have. So I would like specific answers, action answers from the trust members about what action they would take in order to husband our resources, both for the present and for the future, looking at both surface and groundwater. Specifics, please. Sir, we did. Thank 
start this point? Well, like you say, we get a lot of water rainfall here every year. I think 36 inches is a safe estimate. So I'm not sure that we have a real water shortage problem. I think we have a water distribution problem. The way we're handling it right now is pretty ad hoc with about a dozen water districts. And there's not really anybody working together to go, okay, how do we fix the island water problems? I know that this is a bit of a CRD issue, but I think that from a land use perspective, we could look at water catchment as one way of helping to solve new development issues and encourage that type of industry or that type of, well, I'll call it industry for lack of a better term, but initiate education for water catchment. The Islands Trust actually has a water catchment system set up for display purposes, but I don't see it really being promoted very much. And I think we could really help to educate people on this island about the benefits of water catchment. I know a number of people who rely 100% on it, and it works quite well. Yes, water storage is clearly a major issue, and I would work cooperatively with my CRD counterpart to address that issue. I'm very serious when there may be some land use planning decisions that can help to facilitate water storage here on the island. We're talking quality as well as quantity, and the Trust's responsibility right now is to deal with RAR and implement RAR or something that meets RAR's requirements. It's a provincial law. We must do so. It's quite possible that our regulations right now more or less or come close to meeting what we need. We need mapping. That's going ahead, or at least there's a budget item of $45,000 right now in front of Trust Council, and we're assuming that's going to go through. So RAR has to be implemented. And then, of course, encourage those projects which are water use friendly, if you like. Encourage people to use water catchment. We know people who are living very comfortably and well on rainwater, which they capture and supply all their needs in that regard, and we should be encouraging that as trustees. Thank you. 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 Th
You know, Huron Salt's been, everybody recycles. The reason they recycle is not because it's mandated, but because they're educated and it's the right thing to do. Water catchment needs to be the right thing to do on Salt Spring, and it's a really good first step. Thank you. Much has been made of catchment. I once lived in a house over in a basement which was 60,000 gallons of catchment, and it worked very nicely. Um, British Columbia has no groundwater legislation. It's the only province in the country that doesn't. So the issues around groundwater become very problematic for us. And I think we, many of us have had the mysterious well, which was meant to produce five gallons a minute and somehow turns out to produce much less than that. The reference is made to the Trust's experiment on the Ion Talkbook concerning water catchment. That's at the Ruby Altman House down on Isabella Point Road. And by the way, you own it. It belongs to the Trust Fund Board, which is the land holding body of the Islands Trust, and I happen to be a past chairman of that as well. Um, indeed, RAR should be of uh, significant help to us on the drinking water lakes. And uh, I guess my time's up, but thanks for the question. Okay. Next question from the series. Can you have his hand up, make it short then? Well, here, I think that uh, I'll just speculate about the impossible. If South Spring Island was ever to incorporate and we had a mayor and council, we would have a city hall and there would be one office devoted to dealing with water sustainability on the side. We don't have that right now. We have all kinds of separate initiatives going on here. I really feel that uh, if I was CRD director, I would first of all call for a, a strategic plan that brings all the stakeholders together and tries to get the situation developed as it would be if we were incorporated. And that's the only way we're going to do this. We've got a big mess out there and we need to rationalize it. Thank you. And Beth has a very quick comment. Yeah, well, uh the Water Act uh, that, we, that governs our water use on, 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 in the province, I should say, is 102 years old. Um, it's just in the process of being updated right now. Uh, the Water Council chose, uh, and, and, and people were invited to make submissions uh, to how the act should be renewed and changed. The Water Council on Salt Spring actually weighed in on that, and the, the issue is the groundwater piece, which is, as David pointed out, is not covered by any legislation now. It's an opportunity for us to uh, do something about that, and that was the Water Council's attitude. They wanted to see that included. Okay, question from the Sierra side. Thank you. My question is very simple, but in fact, it's the question that I really need the answer to to make a decision in this election. And, and that really is what you, as an individual, and addressing this to all of you, would do in the next three years that is different from the past to make our existing system of governance work. I think the question is the best to all members of the CRD, so we'll start at this end. lobbying the province fund for a government study. Um, having said that, it's probably going to be some time before the type of governance here changes, if the data does change. So the key really to uh, making local government work is for the CRD director and the local trustees to be in uh, a cooperative relationship with each other. That's the key to make the local government work on Salt Spring. I certainly agree. I've uh, worked in various municipalities and understand the way that works. But there's any uh, organization, whether it's a, a business or a government, it depends on two things. The organization itself and the people. So as far as what I would specifically do, I've been noticing our commission, if, unless we work with the trust on economic de development, 
a lot of things don't, don't, just don't happen. You come up against a land use issue. So we have to have a group of the, uh, the three elected officials have to work together. And whether that's informal or formal, I think it's something that definitely has to be done, and that would be one of my priorities. Thank you. Peter? Yeah. Um, I've given this a lot of deep thought, and uh, it occurs to me that uh, some of the things I've learned in the local committees would work very well. In our Salisbury House Committee meeting meets with the hospital affordable every third Monday of the month. So I've been going to that for about 20 years now. We meet once a month, and uh, we have about an hour and a half, and all the various groups that represent various entities, uh, they report what's going on, and, and uh, decisions are made there. And uh, suggestions go to the respective parties that can carry out things. Now, what I'm driving at is this. I think the trustees and the directors, and including also past office holders in the same places, so that there's some continuity over time, should meet once a month. And uh, they should be there. And, um, and uh, deal with stuff that both parties need to know about, need to take action on, and need to basically understand each other about, even if they don't agree. Thank you very much. Well, I've got to say that in the last three weeks, I've been around to just about every department of the CRD, whether it's building inspection or a park or uh, septic treatment or bio enforcement. And I think we're very blessed on this island. The staff that I've met are second to none. They're committed, they're hardworking, and they care deeply about what they're doing, even though sometimes the governance model is a little frustrating. And like the committees that support them are first class. If I were a CRD director, I would try to maintain that morale and try to get the most we can get out of our system until something better comes along. Um, thank you very much. I, there's two things. The informal meetings, which do go on on a regular basis right now, and I've had it for the past three years. And then the other piece, which is also an ongoing thing, and that is, is the interchange uh, between the trust and uh, the various commissions that uh, uh, have their business piece. So, for example, in relationship to transportation, there's always a rep of referrals from the, the, the trust to the Transportation Commission on a, a wide range of activities. This speaks to uh, a public, uh, uh, working in the public sphere so that everyone, both the trust people and the, the, tra uh, the transportation people, know what's going on. And it'll continue. Uh, it's pretty hard. We, I mean, there are a couple of other things we could probably try to do. We could set up a, a mock, it's not, I don't like to use the word mock, but a council that is not, uh, doesn't have any authority, which would bring all the people together on a regular basis. Uh, so you would have your trust folks, you would have the CRD, you would have representatives of the commissions too. It would work some way like a, a council, but it wouldn't have the authority of the council would have. Well, obviously the first thing, as everybody has said, regular meetings with the trustees. I would attend all meetings and consult directly. We have lots of experts on our island and wonderful volunteers, and I've been uh, talking to them. And then I'm mean, communicating with, with the community, giving regular updates and letting you know what I found out and, and who I'm talking to and what they're saying. And then I would clarify roles and responsibilities between the bureaucracy in Victoria and the commissions and staff here on Salisbury and make sure that that's very clear who does what and who works for who. Thank you. Continue with the trust. Um, working within our current governance structure, and I think we've got to really look at transparency and efficiency within the, uh, the Islands Trust. We need to review and come up with ways to streamline our processes, uh, efficiency, and reduce the overall costs. I'm sure that there are ways that we can cut back, as I've said before, on the time it takes to process some of these permits. I know Larry would suggest that we're being really careful, but we could be really careful and still set benchmarks. Um, Mark from Slate Lumber recently told me that after seven and a half years, his question is, what do I have to do to get this approved? And 
He got no answers back. In fact, he was told, we can't tell you that. That's just wrong. We need to be able to come up with a system where people applying for permits and land use rezonings and all of that sort of stuff have a clear guideline of what they have to do to be able to get permits through and to be able to know if their projects are going to fly within two to three months of submitting an application, not 15 months later, not seven years later. We just need to clean it all up. Yes, I think the best way to improve our government structure is actually to support the type of proposal we heard about earlier in this meeting from Dan Slakoff, the Community Dialogue Initiative. I believe the answer to improving our government structure will come from the individual members of the community and not from the trustees. I very much believe in a bottom-up approach as opposed to a top-down approach. Thank you. I am committed to making our trust work, and I think it's essential that you elect people who have that commitment. I also am committed to improving it because there is always something that can be done. I think we need a review, a management review of the processes right away, or a management review of our finances to find out how we're using our costs and what's working and what isn't. I think that you talked about communications. I talked about the video system. I would like to see a monthly town hall in a less formal setting where we can get together with the community to talk about what's working and what isn't, what's important and what the community wants the trustees to do. And by the way, I will also be here answering the telephone and on the email seven days a week, eight hours a day in any event. And you have to be able to get hold of your trustees and talk to them. I would want to communicate and have good communication with the CRD director. I think that's very important. I would also want to get out of the finance committee for the trust council. And I think I could do that because he who controls the money has a great deal of control. I am with Mark in this. We have to fix management. It's as bad as I've seen, quite frankly. When I witnessed what went on with the coffee company application, and I'm not talking about the decision. I'm talking about the process. It was all over the map. It was zigzagging from here and there. The very first thing they were asked to do, prepare building designs. That's even before they consider the most fundamental question, the appropriateness of coffee roasting on Salt Spring as a land use. That's considered in month eight. That shouldn't have been the other way around. Three environmental audits, not one of them matters. And Larry thinks that this is a bottom-up situation. It's anything but. I wrote a three-page letter to Matt Fraser, copy to trustees, copy to Sheila Malkinson, copy to the area planning manager, and I gave nine pointers to what they should do. The system should be substantially systematic and analytical. It isn't that. It's very difficult for what I do, unless it's documented and follows a well-designed roadmap. It should be transparent and objective. Documenting the process helps transparency. Objectivity would better serve by a team's process. I'm not even past point two. Three pages like that of things they could have done. Matt Fraser sent me back a nice letter. He's the only one that responded. You know, the system is just the same as when the coffee company application went through. We have to fix management and design. The question was, what will I do that is different from the last three years? Well, the first thing that I would like to do is I would like to take office space in Ganges so that I am there and available. I'll have regular office hours, some of them in the evening, so that people can come and talk to me at any time. I'll post the minutes of meetings. I'll post agendas so that it's completely open and people can come any time to see what's going on. I want the formal sessions to be videotaped by the trust. Private individuals shouldn't have to do that. And I want to get staff input, talk to the staff and find out what their frustrations are, how they think things can be improved. 
because I bet they're just as frustrated as the people who are making applications. I think that we can do better, and I will do everything in my power to make it happen. Thank you. Speaking last means that a number of significant points have already been made, but maybe I can tell you a little bit around about the atmosphere of this campaign, because I have got to speak with many of these people several times. I'm very encouraged by the quickness of the CRD candidates to say how important it is to cooperate with the Trust. I had a very happy situation once when Kelly Booth was the regional director, Bev Byron was the other trustee. There was a free interchange. Indeed, there were periods when we felt that the CRD staff were, in some respects, our staff. We worked hand in hand. We worked back and forth on issues. It was very effective. A minor point, I think our advisory planning commission and our environment committee can be rolled into one, thus saving a significant amount of staff time, because remember, each of these sets of meetings has to be fully staffed. I think we can have some savings there. Thank you. Next question will be from the Trust side. Thank you. My name is Chris Gaxby, and first of all, I just wanted to thank every candidate on this podium for putting themselves forward for those of us who are privileged enough to live on this island. One of the things I've observed, and we all know this, everyone here has, I think, an opinion about the future of the island trust and what it might look like. So my question is really directed, to make it simple, to Peter Grove. Peter, you've taken the position that the island trust is not broken, but you've also, and perhaps you could explain this to us, you've also been a strong proponent of requesting that the provincial government undertake a study about governance for the island. Maybe you could just explain your position on that. Certainly. You've heard me say passionately that I support the trust. There are many people in this island, and some at this table also, who are actively supporting and pushing for incorporation. We must look at that. I want to know the facts. In any kind of dispute or disagreement, you need to know the facts in order to reach an agreement. So I want to know what the numbers are. I want to know what it will mean for us all to incorporate. So let's get that information, and then let's have a conversation throughout the island on this subject. Let's talk about it and find out what's good and what isn't. You know, it really could be a healing process for this island, believe it or not, if we really did manage this process well. So I'm excited about it. I think it's something that we should do, and when we have the information, we'll be able to make sensible decisions as a community. Mr. Chair, can I have a follow-up on that? Yes, I'd just like to speak to that. It has been said that three people are actively pushing incorporation, and I suspect that people think I'm one of those three. I'm not actively pushing for incorporation. I want to see a governance study so that we can see what the facts are, and then the people of Salt Spring can make their own decision. Mr. Chair, if I may, I think this is one of the points that Peter and I differ on. I am not a supporter of a governance study. In fact, I think it's fiscally irresponsible to ask for one within a decade of the last one and the last referendum when 70 percent of Islanders voted against. So I think the provincial government has it right. It's not time to do that over again. So that's a major difference, I think, between my candidacy and some of the others. Thank you. You know, I think there is a real confusion where people think criticism of the trust means we don't support them. But that's not the case. Criticism of the trust is intended to allow them to do naval gazing and to alter their systems and processes so they can provide a better service for us and for our environment. Now, I find that they don't listen. And when we criticize them, we're accused 
of being antitrust, of trust bashing, of, of having a, a hidden agenda, of being developers. If they would listen to us, they, I would think they, they would ensure their own, own survival better than, than uh, the status quo. Proceed with a restructured study on South Spring Island unless all three locally elected officials support it. I do support a provincially funded study, restructured study on South Spring, leading to referendum. If it succeeds, good for us, we'll make a great municipality. If the vote fails, then it will be time to look at restructuring the Ireland's trust itself. I've been there before, along with two other elected officials, I brought about the previous $100,000 study leading to referendum. Thank you. Mark, did you want to come up? Can I ask you a show of hands how many people support a governance study in this room? Uh, seems like a fair amount, and maybe that's not appropriate, but that's what I hear when I walk around the island. Um, that doesn't mean that we support incorporation. We want to get the facts and figures. I hear all the time that our taxes are going to go up and we can't afford it, but we don't know if we can afford it or not. Right now, we don't make our own decisions. We don't, we don't control an entire island budget, and that, to me, looks pretty promising when we can put all of the money together in one pot, have people who are salt springers, elected from salt springs, deciding how we're going to spend our money. Theoretically, it makes sense. If we do a study and it ends up that our taxes are going to go up 100% if we incorporate, I would vote no. But we need to know that information before we can move forward. As the question was initially asked of Peter Grobel, let him have the last 30 second response. Yeah, I do think um, it's important that we make it clear that at full. Um, George and Mark and Carol all explicitly said a number of times that they were pressing for incorporation and they extolled its virtue. No, on a number of never said it. So um, I think it's important that we carry that. Absolutely not. Next question from the CRD side. Can I just comment here because that is no, not I think we've got here to ensure the record. Our, posi our position is more than clear. It's on our website. We were given a yes-no answer. We had no middle road to take. Mark and I were the only ones who answered it honestly, because we were we were we were uh, we had derisory remarks from the, the audience, but we failed to do so. Um, check our website. I think there were a few more candidates that actually said yes when that question was asked, and it's pretty simple. If you ask a question, yes or no, you. It's a yes or no question. Answer yes or no. One candidate said yes and no. I might say that I thought that Fulford had been off me. I think we'll move on to the next topic, and uh, I'm sure we might have time to come back to this. As here. There are over 10,000 cars running back and forth through Ganges and on up to about Atkins Road or more every day. I have photos of congestion that is so bad that no ambulance or fire truck would get through there. During the summer, I also have witnessed Traffic backed up way, way beyond Moby's, almost to Long Harbor Road. We have a really serious traffic problem in the village area of Ganges. I want to know from the CRD, because the former trustees have pulled me inside of their jurisdiction, I have many letters with the former um, Kevin Falcon, Minister of Transportation, about all of this. And I really think we've got to take some action on it. What's it going to look like in five years? 
even for pedestrians who are going on Saturday. Okay, the cars are parked all for granted. Pedestrians have to walk on the road. And I don't think that that expensive million dollar roundup is going to do much for us either. So I want to know what's happening and what you will do about the traffic problem that we have and will have. Thank you. The rest of the CRD will start at the far end. Thanks for the question, Lily. Um, there's lots of different aspects to it. I, I, it's right in my platform that I support uh, the expansion of public transportation on this island and uh, non-motorized transportation. So specifically, I, uh, I will be seeking funding for the Fulford to Vesuvius dedicated bike lane. I know there are many, many people on this island who would much prefer to get on their bike than to get in their car. Um, an idea that I have discussed with uh, a BC Ferry captain who thought it was a great idea is to encourage BC Ferries to introduce incentives for car sharing. He said he'd never heard that idea brought up at a public meeting. Um, I would love to, and this is not something that I have, would have exclusive jurisdiction over as a CRD director, um, but I've been getting a lot of enthusiasm about it um, in the community, is I would love to see a pedestrian zone, a pedestrian commons um, in part of Ganji, so that would involve rerouting traffic, um, starting at the bottom of Ganji Hill around part of downtown. <laughs> There's some excellent ideas. I think uh, one of my priorities would be to expand the public trans transit. And when we uh, visit Vancouver, the bike lanes are all over the city. And uh, you can walk safely, you can ride safely. And I think there's terrific opportunities to connect the major categories on Salt Spring with uh, bike lanes and, and walking paths that are, that are safe. Right now, our tourists, uh, you, you wonder why there hasn't been anybody killed in the summertime. So I'm certainly in favor. And another idea that I have is during the Saturday market, why not have a shuttle service? Make it a fun thing. Make it like a trolley and take people up to the Farmers Institute and Park in there because parking is a, is a huge problem during the summer, particularly during market time. Thank you. Transportation Commission is working on uh, dealing with a bottleneck between uh, in the Upper Ganges area, which is a bit of a problem, but uh, they, they have some plans for relieving the congestion there where people go to the country roads or they come out of it, and that's, that's a difficult one. This also needs another pedestrian crosswalk. Um, the choke points need to be addressed for starters, and I think that would, that would solve the problems. And uh, beyond that, uh, well, you know, uh, electric cars are an idea, smaller cars, smart cars. Those people that don't need big wagons, uh, only stay mostly on the island, they should switch to something smaller. The size of what's going around on the road is part of the problem too, especially if it, that doesn't have a compelling purpose. Um, a lot of things, it's, it's a headache for most jurisdictions. It's nothing easy, especially when you bear in mind that the CRD is not really, a, it has to hold a hot towel to the highway ministry, which is its own authority. And uh, as long as we can get there here, we might be uh, in hope here. Thank you. Yeah, the reason to show up here is Sid asked Arvid, how can we do something about the parking problems during the Saturday market? He said, tell the realtors to keep their cars out of town. But seriously though, if you go to the uh, CRB website, and it's a very good website, and go to the electoral area of Salt Spring, you'll the pop up the various committees, including the transportation committee that uh, Dietrich just mentioned. And in it, there's a very clever mapping been done of the friction points, the, the choke points, where there might be a roundabout, where there might be a crosswalk. A lot of work's been done already by uh, uh, some kind of firm, I don't know the name of it, from, and uh, it's well worth looking at, so I suggest you. Yeah. It's an excellent map and it shows the chop points and I think that's a good place to start. Thank you very much. As we, we've all talked about the Transportation Commission and what their initiatives are, uh, including the, let's, let's just put the roundabout off the table. It's in a way a red herring. It's the most expensive piece. It's a, it's a useful
useful tool. One could argue that we don't really have, we don't need it at this point in terms of the kinds of traffic we have. But we've got to just like, it's just another piece of dealing with our traffic. We've got a ride share program, which is just starting right now, as we speak, in the next month or so, which would be formalized hitchhiking on the island. It's set up so it doesn't compete with our public transportation system. The provincial government just announced today, as a matter of fact, a $30 million fund to support electric vehicles. That is the plug-ins for them. They're both for communities to have them in public places, and then personal support for a plug-in in your own particular home. It goes on and on. It's just not happening right now. That's the issue. It's actually shovel ready, and they're looking at February or March of this year to put it in place. The upper Ganges, that means sidewalks and roadways from, we'll call it a GVM, down to the corner of the upper Little Ganges Road. It's $700,000. Your next response, please. Yes, I believe they're also part of that plan is also to have sidewalks and bike lanes up in the road as far as the school. So those things are already happening and fully funded, phase one at least. I would also support a car co-op, which I believe was part of the original plan at Mark County Gardens, and it's time that we started looking at that. It's very well in lots of other places, and we could help to put that together. But mostly bike lanes and sidewalks are really important, and we need to keep working on those and fully support getting lots of people more out of their cars and onto their bikes. And the handy dart. I would like to see a handy dart for people with mobility issues and seniors getting their door to door so that we have one dedicated vehicle doing that instead of lots of different people going back and forth. Next question, I was first. If you don't mind, and it's just regarding pedestrianizing downtown, especially during the Saturday market. Until such time as the fire hall moves out of downtown, that won't happen because as a volunteer, it would be pretty hard for me to walk downtown to the fire hall to respond to a call. The cars need to come into town. Once the fire hall moves up to Brinkworthy, which I hope it does soon, then that idea might have a little bit more merit, but right now it just won't fly. We're going to have to move on. We're going to have to move on. I'm going to close it to North, but I've been in direct contact with our fire chief, and he's been very helpful. And I would just like to say that I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity
port brand. And we should be developing that as an island and making more work for our, for our young people. Thank you. Next question to the CRD. And uh, let me point out to people that are here. Uh, just a minute. We've only got another 20 minutes. Uh, and there's quite a few people lined up, so I think we better keep moving. Or there's going to be a lot of people who get a chance to ask the question. Uh, can, I, can I respond to that question? Is this no, no. no. I'm going to put it online there and be fair to everybody. So move on to the yes. uh, I want to bring the issue of, of uh, drinking water on the island back. Uh, I heard about uh, the health of our lakes and water catchment. Many people on the island depend on wells for their water. And I'm really worried, and I'm outraged actually, to know that they are practicing hydrofracturing to improve well uh, yield on the island. And uh, yes, uh, I would like to see that ban. Uh, I'm not sure if it's an CRD issue exclusively, but this was the shorter line, so I asked the CRD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I would, I would love to mention it from the plastic as well. <laughs> Okay, can I ask that you keep your answers to 30 seconds because I'd like to give a fair chance to other people to speak as well. So we'll start with our end. Uh, thank you for the question. I'm, I'm really glad I attended the last water council meeting uh, because I have a better understanding now of the geology of our island and uh, hyperfraction is a really, sounds like a really bad idea. It's also probably more a matter of uh, you know, land zoning and within the trust jurisdiction of CRD. Um, I think that's all I have to say right now. I'd like to go back to one of my original points and one that's also in my platform. And that's the fact that we really need to capture all the resources and all the issues and work on an overall plan. We need an overall strategy for water, every aspect of water. Thank you. I'm going to avail myself of the expertise that's out there. It's highly technical and it's sophisticated. It's been uh, practiced for a long time and it's readily available. There's an awful lot of resources that have never been tapped. All the past uh, candidates for office go to the highest levels in the civil service and they're forced to give you time and answer your questions. This works every time. But I think the volunteer engineers will probably flush out where all the parts are located and and, uh, and uh, give us some real serious uh, advice on how to proceed. Thank you. And the lack of its report that I referred to earlier um, has analyzed the 1,700 wells that are already drilled into the subsurface of this island. And they have identified three issues that are a problem. A third of the wells sampled included some bacterial contamination of photocoliform and other pipes. They showed high manganese concentrations, are acceptable. They leave black deposits in the pipes. And third, the arsenic concentrations were greater than those normally acceptable to uh, community standards. But these are some of the small issues to do with subsurface water on the side. Uh, thank you very much. As you know that we have very little authority over our wells, we have some authority over water districts, um, uh, both public and private. So the problem is that we have to either uh, bite the bullet and uh, rejig our Water Act, the 102 year old Water Act, to, to contain that kind of thing and then we can move on and deal, deal with the problem that you're suggesting. It's a very complicated thing. Um, would, would we be successful? I don't know. It's apparent that uh, the provinces and the units are looking at uh, controlling groundwater at the present time. So. I wasn't aware that fracturing was actually happening, but given the geology of our islands, it uh, sounds like this is about the worst thing you could be doing in terms of everybody else's water. So it certainly needs to be brought under regulation, and uh, yes, we need to lobby the provincial government to get that water act updated. I think since you picked the line just because it's shortest, it should apply to the trust fund as well. If you to respond to that. I don't honestly know very much about hydrofactoring, but I do think that we need to get everything together, and um, I think we should have some professionals actually looking at it, but I can't really speak to that because 
I don't know the answer. Any others, or we'll go on to the next question? Okay, next question on the bus stop. Hi. My name is Miles Wilson. I've been here for 30 years. I think the only person up there that's been here longer than me is Dieter. Yeah, that's right, sort of. My question is, I'm going through a rezoning right now on a piece of property for a good reason, which you'll find out about. But the trustees have been very helpful with that process with me, anyways. And one of the things that came up is, why don't we do affordable housing? Why don't we do affordable housing? And I said, give me an example. So we started talking, and 30 units came up. So I did the math. It would cost me over $300,000 for water hookup. It would cost me $210,000 for sewer hookup. It would also cost me, at my cost, to bring the systems up past my property to the other end at a tune of over a million dollars. How are we going to get affordable housing on this island when we've got hard costs, which they are, and come in when the trust is set, or somebody's set, take a trust vote, somebody has set housing guidelines that you have to charge a certain amount of rent on affordable housing. How is that affordable when you've got costs like that? How do we solve that? Starting at the far end of the trust. That's a real good question, Miles. And I don't know if I can help you on that one either, frankly. I mean, there are a tremendous amount of costs that we have to look at in terms of bringing all the services. We have to do a thorough investigation as to why everything costs as much as it does. We've got to work together individually on each application for affordable housing, and we have to work hard to try and find the answers to those questions. But the math that you've laid out there makes it pretty unaffordable for 30 units there. I see your problem, and I see the dilemma in trying to make it happen. Yeah, it could be in the end. I mean, the idea of developing property where we don't have to run water and sewer as far as we're doing it might be an idea. I mean, there may be areas where we could increase densities where the water and sewer are already. Can we expedite this, please? We're going to run out of time. Okay, I didn't even hear the buzzer go, but I'll pass it on to Larry. Thanks, Mark, and thank you for your question, Miles. I take it that this was a question put to you. It wasn't going to be a reason to not approve your application. It was an observation, a suggestion. Maybe you could help out in that area. Yeah. You may be interested to know that we already have more affordable housing per capita than any other community in B.C. here on Salt Spring. But that said, it remains one of the top land use issues on my list of priorities. And as a trustee, I would follow the lead of our former trustees in facilitating the efforts of community groups seeking to rezone land for this purpose. As we've heard before, the Islands Trust itself won't be building any affordable housing itself. That's not its role, but it can assist with local efforts to provide those types of housing units. And we seem to have done well over time. Your concerns are real. I mean, you're a developer. You know what you're talking about. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought you were. Anyhow, densification is what seems to me to make logical sense. So in Ganges, you have stores with suites over the top. Maybe the cost per square foot of doing that for those suites would be less and more affordable. The Kings Road Medical Group there, they seem to be doing that very well. And I'm very optimistic that that's going to be a great success. And if they can do it, maybe others can do it. I don't know. I'd like to think so, though. You're not the only one who's been mistaken for a developer, Miles. The numbers don't crunch, and they won't crunch. I mean, there are things like service sharing and other developments within the neighborhood or in the area could be facilitated so that you can share the cost of services. If you could go out to tender on things like 
sewage and water supply, but of course under the current system you have no option but to go to CRD, I'm assuming. So it won't happen unless one of those things, one of those factors can either be altered and on 30 the numbers just aren't going to work. Unfortunate. You're right with those costs. Houses won't be affordable to our young people. It's not an easy question to answer. No. However, I think it is one that we need to look at from the point of view of increasing densities where appropriate. And I, as a trustee, all I can do is, whenever an application comes, is to work with anyone who comes with an application for affordable housing to see what we can do to make it so that it does become affordable and you don't have these huge costs per unit. Good question, Miles. Partly it's answered by the existing community plan which specifies that low-cost housing development should be precisely in the areas which are already serviced by the water districts and which are already sewered. That's why Maricopa Gardens was able to go ahead. That's why Norton Road is in the wings and may still go ahead. I can feel for you on the question of the expense of delivering water. I have a little commercial unit over at Merchant's Mews. We've been talking to North Salt Spring and we're looking at $700,000. I'm not certain how any amount of planning can make it cheaper to put those mains in. In Ganges, here's an innovation. The community plan allows extra commercial development where housing is built not in the second story but actually in the third story. That's something that's on the table. Maybe you're the man who would know if the numbers can be made to work. Okay, we have several people yet and we're going to have to call the questions off in 10 minutes at the latest. So could you make your questions very concise, very brief, and the answers as well. One quick point. Could I say something on the CRD side, please, about the board? No, I think we've got to keep on going because otherwise we're not going to get done. These guys only get paid $28,000 a year. You should take your hat off to them because that ain't near enough. We'll move to the CRD side. Thank you. Very concise. I'm back to the water question. We now have blue algae in more than St. Mary's Lake. We have blue algae in St. Mary's Lake for quite a while now. We have called in experts and now we have blue algae in St. Mary's Lake minus $1 million from the first expert. We now have chlorine in our water, fluoridated water, all sorts of animals that have died from this. Could we have a few less experts? There are people on this island who know about water and healing water and they are obviously not the experts. Would anybody from the CRD side like to respond? I'll say something about that. You know, I've talked to people around St. Mary's Lake and it's just disheartening. There are so many species, particularistic, self-absorbed suggestions and answers and explanations. It makes your head spin. The lake obviously does need some treatment. Certainly the water does. Maybe the whole lake does. Now there's a lake in the northern side of central Washington which actually has treated itself. They've treated it every 12 years with aluminum silicate. And I aim to go out there and find out how that works. Now anybody from here can go there too and ask me to make a tour. So that's potable water. Same kind of watershed. Very small one and surrounded by houses. 
I mean, I don't think it's a matter of reinventing the wheel here to try to get the lake cleaned up. Not only that one, but the other ones as well. Thank you. Question from the first time. Oh, I thank you all as well for throwing your hat into the ring in this incredible race. This is going to be a good one, so enjoy the race. I'm Mickey McLeod from Salt Spring Coffee. I think that George and Mark have already answered my question, but the question for the rest of you candidates is, if a company like Salt Spring Coffee were to apply for rezoning, similar to what you did in the future, I want to know how you would handle that. That's my question. I'll leave it to you. I think the question is addressed to the trust, so I'll have to keep your answers to 30 seconds. I guess we've already... Starting at the far end, Mark. Okay, so I guess that's directed to me, first of all. I guess I would follow the planning process the way it's laid out. I don't have any great innovation to offer there. I think that we would just follow the plan that is laid out, and that's what we're legally bound to do. I would like to see a process which is faster and more efficient than what you had to go through, and I would like a process that involved the community earlier in the process so that it didn't put it all apart at the end. I think what happened in the Salt Spring Coffee, whatever you want to call it, I want people to know, was tragic for our community, and I think that to... after so much time and energy to dismiss it on the grounds that they were dismissed on is wrong. If people have doubts about something, speak up at the beginning, not at the end, and that's what I will do. Mickey, thank you for coming here tonight. I remember your letter at the end of last year to the Driftwood. In fact, it may have been an advertisement in which you explained the coffee company's new offer. I think it was a masterpiece of community building and, if I may say so, diplomacy. You laid no blame. You talked about your company moving on. I was very grateful for that attitude. I've reflected on this, Mickey, and I realize that as a former trustee and a trustee hopeful, that one does have a sense of where applications are going. Indeed, if one is really fortunate, you can tap into kind of the sixth sense about projects that really do need to proceed and some that may get into all manner of trouble. I'd like to think that I would have what it would take, the courage, the wisdom possibly, the help of other good staff and another good trustee, to deal with a matter like the coffee company very early on and not let it blow up into as big an issue as we know it was. So thanks again, Mickey. I just want to thank you for getting involved in it because it's one of the greenest projects I've been involved in in 47 years of practicing. There's a low environmental impact architect. It was really one of the... It's a huge loss for this community. I'm deeply disappointed. Okay, the next question from the CRD side. And there's one more from the trust side and another here. One most important issue to me is my taxes. And I've heard a lot of you this evening tell me how you're going to spend more of my taxes. I haven't heard one single candidate tell me how they are going to reduce my taxes. And, you know, if it keeps up, I'm going to be one of those people looking for affordable housing. I would say, if there's one candidate at this end of the table that raised their hand and said, I'm going to try to reduce your taxes, and one at the other end that would raise their hand, I could leave now and say, I know who I'm voting for. Each of you is a candidate. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
tribute. It would take two seconds for me to do, which is a total of 24 seconds, to tell me, yes or no, you're going to at least hold my taxes in the coming year. <laughs> Uh, any response should be very quick and concise. I'm a former chairman of the Trust Finance Committee. My objective, if elected, will be to keep the Trust budget within our limited and shrinking means. Thank you. Um, this is a question directed to the CRD. I would like to respond, please. Um, there are three topics that people bring up to me when I'm out meeting people. Number one, governance. Number two, drinking water quality. Number three is affordability. And the people who've been talking to me about affordability are middle income retirees who tell me they have retired on a good pension, but because local taxes have been climbing so high and so quickly that they're looking at having to leave the island. Now, I've lived here for 18 plus years and I have lost many friends, single people and family friends who couldn't afford to live here, now are we going to see the exit of the middle class? And if we do, then who's going to be left? I will do what I can to reduce your taxes. You heard it here first. Okay, uh, well, I'm doing my case with that petition there, getting a bit of flack, but of course I don't mind that at all, because it flushes out all the codes that... Uh, <laughs> We have self succeeding provisions and unusual clauses in the bylaw that normally have found there. That's one thing. The other one is pretty good. The recycle center gets an inspector about once every few weeks or so, drives through the plant, charges $1,200 for it, doesn't even get out of the car. That's where your tax money is going. I mean, that's a fee then. It's not seen as a tax, but it'll still show up on your, on your taxes, you see. That's the thing. There's a lot of feather bedding and a lot of... I would I'd call that corruption. That's what we've got to call public corruption. Thank you. And I'm a fiscal conservative. I've uh, always run really tight budgets, and I'll do the same. If I'm elected, I'll look at every dollar to make sure we get good value out of your money. I believe that any tax money should be an investment in the community, not an expenditure. I've turned around two uh, not-for-profit companies, and I've always run a tight ship. Thank you. Um, well, one of the things that we can, that the CRD director can do, is because he has the the, the right to approve approve all of the budgets of the, uh, the various commissions. So he's in, or she, is in a position to make a decision as to how much they have and how much they can spend. And that's so you can control peace. That's not a lot, but you can control something. So reduce taxes, I don't think that's likely. Control them, yes, I think we can do that. I'm, I'm one of Leslie's middle-income retirees. So yes, I'm just as concerned as anybody else about taxes. There's nothing in, in my platform or anything that I said I'll do that's going to cost you any money. If it's going to cost money, it goes to public referendum and you get to decide whether you want to go there or not. And I will get, um, go after insurance for people in the water districts and try and get some money back from them for it. The Driftwood is putting out a questionnaire for all the candidates asking what CRD services could be used that we're not using already. I've checked it out with a few people and they say be very cautious, be very cautious because it's going to cost a lot of money. CRD projects are very expensive and I'll certainly be looking out for that. When I was on the fire board, we had, a, we had a district fire board, we could have had a CRD board. I'm very glad we kept the district fire board because the CRD board, we had one in Pender, would have cost us a lot more in many ways than we're spending now for fire protection. Any other answers to that question? Otherwise, we'll move on. I would, I would like to answer the question. I do not, have not supported or recommended anything that is going to cost us more in taxes. Let's use what we've got. Make it work. I am trained to understand money issues. If elected, I will do my best to control and manage the trust expenses, and I intend to get elected to the Finance Committee, which will allow me to do so. Thank you. 
63% increase in budget in seven years. That's what we suffered at a time when the economy went down 18%. The Chamber of Commerce wrote a fairly detailed reply um, on the issue of the trust budget, objecting to it, giving reasons why it was excessive, 6% increase uh, on, on the day, but also sitting with $2 million of our money, uh, dollars of our money in the bank. Uh, Sheila Malkinson actually wrote a letter to the Ferry Commissioner complaining that ferry fees had gone up four times the rate of inflation and failed to mention that trust budget had gone up five times the rate of inflation. And the last question from the lady of the trust I'm asking a question for me and Julia Lucic. They're essentially the same question. Um, and it's directed at Peter uh, Grove and Larry Woods and David Borman specifically because um, all three of you have um, said that uh, a small group of dissidents on the island have poisoned the well and made life and political discourse on the island difficult. Um, as one of those dissidents, and trust me, we're not a small group. Um, I see the failure of the current trustees and CRD director obvious in our poisoned lakes, the loss of our birds, the pileup of dangerous tinder in the forests, our lower income housing shortage, the loss of young families, lack of democracy, abuse of power, and our economy contracting 18%. Are these substantial complaints disallowed in the trust area, and are we meant to just shut up? Is that what you want to do? Last three, the, the question of the rest of you is fine. Good heavens, no. We've all got reasons to be dissatisfied with all sorts of things. But let's look at what they're, what they're attacking. Let's not, take, let's not attack the, the trust of me having control over things that doesn't have control over. I want a better trust, I want a better, a better service for all of us islanders, and I pledge to do everything that I can do to help that. Uh, and just echo that, the intimidation and vilification is not something that's healthy for our democracy in any way. Your blog is the source of it. Check it out. One of the difficulties that many of us have is anonymity on some of the websites that have sprung up. I went made a list of people posting on them a little while ago. I went to four websites, and here are the people listing. Anonymous, 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 V, Mermethane, anonymous, 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 Tom Vikander whose letters was for the purpose of complaining about the anonymity. I find it very difficult to respond to websites, for example, that seem simply to feed on each other, to cross-fertilize each other, and which seem to consist of virtual voters, some of whom may simply be repetitions of other virtual voters. Thank you. as determined by this community 
ahead of the needs or wishes of any one group. Thank you. I love living on Salt Spring and I'm an active volunteer, but I want to do more for the community. The CRD job description identifies fiscal management and policy development as key requirements. I have many years of experience in both. I would also like to point out that I am running on my abilities to do the whole job, not one or two issues. Issues will change, but the job requirements not so much. If you honor me as your CRD director, I promise to work hard to deliver my platform and help build a stronger community with an appropriate environmental, social, and economic balance, and to restore confidence in the CRD. And I will be available full time to do that. In closing, besides, don't you really want a Mac? <laughs> well, folks. Uh... If you like me, I'll uh, certainly uh, won't jump out of my hide. I'll still be the same one I was last time. And uh, I think they know that at the CRD, they may not be ready for it this time. There's some serious malfeasance going on. And uh, I'm going to be, I'm just dying to get my claws into the turkey that charges 1200 bucks for his inspection fees. <laughs> Got notions of uh, flouting the uh, conflict of interest rules. Yeah, try it again. <laughs> if you want strong, experienced outspoken leadership, vote for me. You can read more about it in KenLeeForCRD.com. But I'd like to say thank you to the Driftwood for letting us on today. It's a lot of work. We appreciate it. Thank you to our moderator. Thank you to our audience. And it's really been fun working with these 11 other people. It's like the last supper up here, you know? <laughs> but uh, I've enjoyed it. Thank you. I think we're all, ladies and gentlemen, we, we haven't punched each other or anything. We've been getting along really well. Thank you. <laughs> so what role are you in <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. As I said at the beginning, chapter two, what's next if I'm reelected? Okay, if I'm reelected, I will continue to work for a sustainable community, environmentally, socially, and economically. I will support the investigation and establishment of a handy guard service for Salt Spring. I will update our bike path plans to produce shovel-ready projects across Salt Spring. I will maintain a no-tax increase policy for all the services coming under the authority of the CRD. I will campaign for a government study to be undertaken by the Ministry of Community Development. And finally, I want to thank all of you tonight. This is what democracy is all about, and I'm a Democrat, and this is what makes my heart really kind of <laughs> I've lived on the island for 31 years. I raised my children here. My grandchildren live here. I love this island, and I'm ready. I want to give back to my community. I'm a good listener. I believe in fostering cooperation and collegiality. I believe in making decisions on the basis of information rather than personalities or political agendas. I will do this as a full-time job. I will listen to islanders. I will provide regular updates, and I will consult with all other agencies, including the Office Trust and BC Ferries. I've been hearing about key areas that need attention, the hospital, waste and water management, transportation, affordable housing, and parks and recreation. I'm happy to discuss them with anyone, and you can look on my website for details. November 19th is your chance to have a say in how you want your community to move forward. I would be honored to act as your representative. I'm concerned about where we're going to be in uh, 10, 20 years if some things don't change on Salt Spring Island. Um, I think I mentioned earlier a lot of my friends have already left. Other people are thinking about doing it because it's a tough place to raise kids. And we need to do more for young families. We need to create 
somehow find ways to build more affordable housing, transition towards a deep green economy that can create opportunities for young people and careers. As a community, we can do better. I want to live in a community that we can be proud of. I'd like to see our downtown revitalized with a lot of shops. We need a boardwalk that runs all the way around. We need sidewalks downtown. Our community is ready for a change, one that restores balance, and George Rams and I will do everything in our power to achieve it. On November 19th, please vote for George and I. Thank you. I too would like to thank the Driftwood and uh, our audience today, uh, both present with us here and online for their participation in our democratic process, which is one that uh, unfortunately many people seem uh, scared to participate in, and, and that is uh, why I am here standing. Um, I also want to note that uh, most of, much of what I've said, I, I, I get the sense that some of what I've said has not been very popular today, but uh, amongst the candidates, I'm one of who is perhaps the most positive about Salt Spring in its present form. My presence should, should reassure voters that uh, they can take, they can know that there is a candidate who is not for a governance study and who feels that it is fiscally responsible, irresponsible to push for one so soon after the last one. That there is a candidate whose mantra is not rush, rush, rush when it comes to land use, the land use planning process. That there is a candidate who stands clearly against incorporation and uh, that if you, uh, if, that if you uh, elect me, um, there will uh, also be a, 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 that I am a, 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 one who has the courage, to, who appreciates the uh, courage shown by our trustees when they decided in favor of the neighborhood, as in the coffee company case, and who's not troubled by the process nor the outcome in that instance, who's not afraid to say so. Thank you very much. You have heard what I want to do and believe I can do, so I'm not going to cover that. I just want to say very simply, Mary and I love this island and we are committed to it. And I want to work with my fellow trustee, the CRD director, and all of you, my fellow islanders, to continue to keep this a wonderful place for all of us and for our children and for our grandchildren. And if you elect me, I pledge to do my very best to achieve that goal. Thank you so much. We all know what the problems are. The problems are the same as they were three years ago, and probably even six years ago. Um, and they're still here in this election, and, and we have to ask why. Now, if we know the problems, why can't we solve them? Um, I, there are two reasons, I think. The first reason is that the will isn't there, and the second reason is that people are afraid of the alternative. But it, in my view, it's not a risk. It really is not a risk. Um, we can bring good management to this island within the trust structure. We will still have two trustees that will represent us at Trust Council. But we can get accountability, transparency, oversight, um, uh, inclusiveness, uh, responsiveness in the rule of law. And that's all we're asking for an opportunity to do. So I would ask you to vote for Mark and I, and that's what we'll deliver. Excuse me, thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you, Harold. And our time, I forget your name up there, is it? <laughs> um, and thank you to the Driftwood for arranging this. Um, my email address is in the Lions phone book. I invite you to send me any questions you would like answered, and I will answer them on my website. I'm willing to uh, write down what I will do and where I stand on things. So ask me to do it. I feel that I could work collegially with any of the gentlemen who are running with me. And, um, excuse me, please check me out, caroldoddfortrust.com. Thank you. Well, the last word is really yours, not mine. Uh, there's been much made about civility and the need to come together. Look at your neighbors.
This is a real Salt Spring gathering. Perfect congruence around all of the issues, not a chance. A great deal of civility, a lot of humor. Yes, definitely. Of the trust candidates, I'm offering experience. I'm six years a trustee. I'm 25 years on Salt Spring Island. Once in prehistory, I had 11 years as a Canadian diplomat. There is a need for experience. That's what I'm offering. I'm asking you to join me at the Centre on November 19th. Thank you all for coming. Harold, thank you so much for your part. And that pretty well winds up the evening. I thank you on behalf of the Central for coming and being a wonderful, uh, cooperative session.